It's edition number 21 to Talent Talk, and it's going to be a good one with former Osprey baseball great Drew Weeks on the podcast today. Before the talk, let's go through last week's action. It's crossover season, so there's a full slate of activity across the athletics department. Men's and women's basketball, women's tennis, and softball were all in action, and the Cooper Beach Volleyball Complex was open Saturday in this week of UNF Athletics. UNF men's basketball stayed atop the conference with two more wins, improving to 16-10 and and 9-2 in A-Sun play after wins against NGIT and FGCU. UNF now has 307 triples, three-pointers on the year after adding 10 more against FGCU. Men's basketball also clinched a spot in the A-Sun championship. The women's hoop team was also on the road going to FGCU Saturday and NGIT Monday. North Florida is now 13-11 and 6-5 and and in the conference after a pair of tough road losses. Jazz Bond continued to do what she does best. She put up five blocks against NGIT. She's got four games this year with at least five blocks. And she's averaging two and a half blocks a contest. Women's tennis is rolling right now. They claimed another win, improving to 5-0 for its best start since the 2010 season. The Ospreys overcame a loss in doubles and a weather delay to overturn South Alabama 5-2. Softball is now 2-3 after starting off the season at the Trojan Classic and at Gainesville Wednesday. UNF down Western Kentucky to open last weekend and put up a six-run seventh to defeat Charleston in Game 2. The Ospreys dropped a pair of contests 3-0 on the second day in Troy, Alabama. Dominic Barton claimed his third A-Sun Player of the Week honor of his career after being tabbed with the honor February 5th. Donna Roskick on the beach volleyball squad was selected to the A-Sun preseason all-conference team. And going on to baseball, which is starting up this week, Brian Baker, former UNF Osprey pitcher, was selected as a non-roster spring training invitee with the Blue Jays. Big news for UNF. And also another pitcher, Eddie Miller, redshirt senior currently, was named to the NCBWA Preseason Stopper of the Year watch list. UNF Beach Volleyball, as mentioned before, held the grand opening to the Cooper Beach Volleyball Complex Saturday. The first matches at the new on-campus facility are set for February 21st. So stay tuned for that. But for now, tune in to our conversation with Drew Weeks. So really lucky to have him on today. He's been running around the Pacific Coast League and down in the Dominican Republic after another year with the Albuquerque Isotopes. Weeks was drafted by the Colorado Rockies in the seventh round of the 2015 MLB draft after a three-year career in the Navy and Gray. Weeks has appeared in over 600 games in the minors, accumulating over 2,300 at-bats. And this past winter, he played in the Dominican Winter League along with Donnie DeWeese. His brother Wes just graduated from UNF after playing for two years with the Ospreys. And after that very abbreviated intro, let's welcome Drew Weeks. Thanks for being on today. How's it been? It's been fun. It's been a journey. Uh, baseball is... It's it's uh it's tough to explain to people what a full season kind of entails. You, it's just one of those things you gotta live. I mean, people step back and like, man, or they hear about what you do, and they're just like, man, you're living the dream. You're living the dream, and it's like, yeah, there's a lot that you don't know about that. You know what I mean? Like it's it's uh the pl- oh the places you will go, oh the places you will go. Um, all the fr- all the friends that I've made. I can't. I feel like every wedding I go to is a is a friend of mine that pl- I play baseball with. Sure, that's what it seems like, and they're they're all over the country. I mean, actually, my brother and I were talking about this this morning. Uh, it's crazy. Our parents, gr- they grew up in Jacksonville, Orange Park, and it's kind of that's kind of their friend group is all right there, and it's cool because, you know, you could always go hang out with them. You can always go see them and stuff like that, but. Uh, it's also it's also cool to have friends that span from like like New Year's Day for instance the friends that span all across the country. New Year's Day, my brother and I went to see the last sunrise of 2019 and then I texted my friend that same morning and I was like, "Bro, you should go get the sunset cuz he lives in La Jolla, which is near San Diego." Yeah, yeah. So we caught the last sunrise and sunset <laughs> of 2019, <laughs> which is and that's that's so that's Who so came cool. up with that idea? I think me and Wes both did. Okay. I think we were just kind of chit-chatting, and then I texted my friend John Cresto, and I was like, bro, you should go catch a sunset. Like, it, And we'll, we'll have literally watched the same sun, like, 
That's so rad. <laughs> to me. I like that. I love that. It's a good little touch right there. So when you're growing up here and then you went to UNF, um, do you think it was always in you to say, I would really enjoy being all these different places? Or do you think that's something that evolved once you kind of started living that life? Um, that, I never, I never thought about that. I never thought about, uh, as a kid, you don't think about the minors. You know, you hear about it every now and then from coaches and stuff like. But you never really think. You think big picture. You think like, man, I could grow up and play for the Rockies. I'll live in Denver. I'll travel to L.A. and we'll go beat the Dodgers. We'll go beat Kershaw. We'll then we'll go to uh, San Francisco. We'll beat Tim Lincecum. You, know, you don't think about. I'm gonna spend my time in you know Des Moines and <laughs> Tacoma and Salt Lake City. But that's what is so. That's another thing. The, the miners is filled with little hidden gems. It's filled with. We, you know, like uh, like little little buried treasures and, and moments in life where you're like, you know, when you look back, that is the stuff that's amazing. And it's finding little cities like that. Mm-hmm. It's 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 amazing. And my brother, he was, him and his girlfriend want to take a trip somewhere. And he was like, you know, you've traveled a lot. He's like, what are some what are some hidden gems that the United a good States question. have to offer? Tacoma's one of them. It's a good question. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier. Right. So, yeah. It's cool. Um. Does that kind of fuel the fire even more when you're playing to know that the better I do, the more opportunity I have to just have more of these diverse experiences? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And then you and then you play uh like we play the Giants every level. So you're constantly playing with the playing against people. True. You grow up maybe you're from your hometown, maybe from your state that you've grown up against, maybe from colleges that you've played against, or even if you haven't and you just share minor league experiences with them. You're all going through the same stuff, so you can all relate. So, and then you see them get called up, and you're like, "Dude, I'm better than that guy." Yeah. You know that that lights that fire, and then and he gets like, called wow. up to another level, or he makes the big leagues, and you're like, "Dude, if that guy can do it, I I got it in me." You know, so it's stuff like that. So when you're in the minors, can do you really have just like a heightened pulse on where guys are and where they're moving up? Is, is that something that just comes with playing all the time, or are you putting an extra effort to see like, I wonder where this guy is. I wonder where this no, guy is. Uh, when you first start out, yeah, because you're you're looking at guys in front of you, you're seeing, you know, what's the benchmark? What do I gotta do? How do I have to perform a little bit better than they do to get to where they are? Or like you see guys get called up from AAA, and you're like, you know, what were his numbers when he got called up? And then and then you like subconsciously that kind of sits back in your mind, but. The Lord bless me, thankfully, with enough talent to where I know that if Drew Weeks goes out and does his thing, that it um, it won't matter. Mm-hmm. It won't matter. You know, and, and every night's also a tryout, right? Yeah. So you're playing for your organization yeah. with your homies, but there's also 29 other teams because you're always playing against somebody. Yeah. And their farm director might be in town. They might have a big league scout in town or, you know, whatever the case may be. So I wouldn't say that I put in extra effort. I definitely check my friend's stats, though, like Donnie Deweese. Sure. Kyle Bird is a kid I grew mm-hmm. up with. He plays with the Rays, and he got traded to the Rangers. Um, I definitely check on the boys. And you homered off of him, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope you're listening to this. <laughs> I was going to bring that up in a bit, seeing what your favorite moment was, because you had a couple cool ones this past year, for sure. You know, that, yeah. that has gone on. That has gone on for so long. That little rivalry. So when did it start? As to, well, him and I met in uh, ninth grade, and my mom yeah. actually scrapbooks. So I have I have faced Kyle Bird. <laughs> Let the record show that I have faced Kyle Bird before, because there's a scrapbook of him on the mound when I was like we were like what eight or ten or maybe even twelve. We were young, and I'm standing on first base and he's on the mound. I always say yeah I singled off you, but he's always like. You got that hit off some other scrub, and then they brought me in the next batter. He's, like, twisting the story. Yeah, well, I mean, nobody <laughs> really knows. Yeah. You know, no one can recall. And I think I faced him one time at a camp at Georgia Southern back when we were in high school. Don't really remember what happened. I think I rolled over. But ever since we had gotten to college and ever since we had been drafted, he's a pitcher. Um, and, and the first day we met, we met in science class. We were inseparable. Like, you, we did everything together. He would always come over stay the night. I'd always go to his house. It seemed like we agreed on everything. Uh, it, it was, it was. Uh, we would always go fishing together with my dad. We did everything, everything together. And I know he would always ask me in the off seasons, like, "Hey," because he obviously we live we're from the same exact place. We yeah. went to high school together. 
he would always be like, hey, you know, can I throw to you? Can I throw to you? And I'm like, nah, dude, I don't feel like I already worked out today. I don't feel like hitting today. As in, like, you didn't want to face As, him? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, there's always been, like, that friendly, like, that brotherly, like, that to always push each other because he committed to Florida State out of high school. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, you know what? Like, he went somewhere big. Like, I got to go somewhere yeah. big. And that led to, uh, you know, some choices that I made trying to go to school and committing and stuff like that. That's a... Well, that's another really long story. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I mean, we go. I committed to the Citadel twice. And twice. Be committed twice. And I didn't still know. Still ended up at UNF. And they, I'm su- they let you go. At the second don't go we'll around. We'll <laughs> that. I'll tell that story in a second. <laughs> and, and that's then, an interesting uh, school then to commit to. Yeah. yeah. We'll get into that. That's okay. A, that's a juicy one. All right. And then, uh, and so I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta sign Division One. And then so I ended up going Division One just like he did. And there's always, there's always been that, that like, you know, like trying to do better than each other you know like that friendly like if he does good great like i'm happy you know like like deep in your heart happy like that you want to see someone succeed like the like that um and then so obviously we never faced each other and then we went to town to nashville and he was down and i was like i was calling my dad i was talking to my dad before <laughs> it's we like went. this is perfect and i was it's like a you, know course. <laughs> yeah, you know what like he might get called up to the big leagues he might not I, you know, because he was, like, up and down all season last year. And then I see him getting loose in the pin. And then I'm like, oh, man, I wonder if he's going to pitch. And I had, like, made the last out, like, the inning before or, like, something like that. So I wasn't coming up anytime soon. And you were like, he might already get his inning. Yeah. And so, yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right. And so then he started kind of getting – he I think he walked somebody. I don't remember what happened, but he started kind of getting hit around a little yeah. bit. And so they bring another guy up in the pin. So I'm like, you know what, like, this – this marathon that we're fighting against each other that we're running is uh it, it was mi- meant it, to happen yeah, yeah. it <laughs> might it might like get pushed to another year like it may never happen yeah you know? oh yeah yeah and then uh something happened and i ended up facing him and i was talking i was talking to him we were talking about trash in the locker room before and he, i was like dude you don't you don't have it in you to throw me off fastballs and he's like, I guarantee you, I'll throw you all fastballs. You know? So I'm so like second he? guessing myself. He's like, you thought he was gonna do the rock paper scissors pitch. trick? I'm not. It was gonna one go pitch. Back. He threw a fastball. I hit a homer. That was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so I'm you were you, sitting fastball. I was swinging as hard as I could the first okay. pitch. Okay. Regardless of what it was, I'm bounced. breaking a curveball and I'm gonna yeah, swing out of my shoes. If it had bounced shoes. 45 feet at 45 feet and skipped across across the plate, I might have thrown my back out trying to hit it. <laughs> so did you look at him when you were running the bases? No, no, I didn't, I didn't want to embarrass him. <laughs> no, I mean not yeah. to like glare, but I'm saying like check to yeah. see how he was no, doing. He knew. Yeah, he knew because <laughs> I was I was yelling, I was yelling in the dugout and stuff like that. So were you nervous when you went up to face him? Uh, I don't, I don't. Nervous is not the word I would look for. It was more like of uh, like anxious. Like just like like I right. this has been building yeah and building for years mm-hmm. and and the moment the moments here like <laughs> who's gonna seize it yeah that's, it's that's kind of what it was it's like this is reality I don't want to I don't want this to pass yeah I gotta take advantage yeah. of this our whole really our whole like relationship has always been like that though mm-hmm. it's always been like it's 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 always it's it seemed like our relationship was always gonna come down to something like that mm-hmm. and he just got a. He just got like I wouldn't be surprised if somehow we end up playing on the same major league team. Mm-hmm. And do I have a hunch that that's going to happen? No. Do I have you know inside information? No. Mm-hmm. But like that's just how our that's how it's always been mm-hmm. between us. Like we just always find our way together. Both guys that care a lot about what they're doing yeah. and put themselves in position to be the next place. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then it's the rest takes care of itself. Yeah. 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 So I mean, yeah. You get what you deserve and put in. Um, yeah. Speaking about nerves, do, do you do AAA players get nervous, or is it a kind of a different feeling the more that you've been in the game? I would. Um, I, I, I remember my first year in AAA being pretty nervous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I mean, if you look at how many at bats I've had, the minors I've had like definitely over a thousand, maybe two thousand. Oh, absolutely, uh, yeah. I mean, you had a yeah. full season alone yeah, at you AAA this you year. Definitely still get, you definitely still get nervous. I mean, think about all the at-bats I've had over my life. Mm-hmm. And to be to get called up against in the big leagues, like, 
that's definitely you definitely put that on yourself though you know mm-hmm. that's that's definitely like uh something something that you just like self-induced mm-hmm. you know because it's just another if you really break it down it's another at bat mm-hmm. right you're probably thinking too far in the future if you're nervous yeah, yeah. oh yeah because you're like you know i gotta get a hit here you know if i don't you know i might get especially if it's like a pinch at bat i mm-hmm. might get sent down tomorrow like you never mm-hmm. know you know so it's you know it is there's a little self-induced to that but i don't i think yeah guys definitely still get nervous but like after the first week you know some some people say like oh after the first pitch it goes away not not for me and that might be for them i think that's a lie but uh for me it's it's like the first first few game first series and then because you know what if you open up on the road and then you go home and you're playing in front of 17,000 people Mm -hmm. just because you got rid of them on the road you know it doesn't just disappear for the the it's a new energy in that place Yeah. yeah Yeah, it's di- yeah, it's, it's different. And on some like some random nights, I'll get it. Yeah, you'll like, just feel it. And I'm like, why am I feeling this way today? Yeah, but it's like yeah. a good feeling. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, like it's like yeah, I'm like, I'm, like I'm yeah, yeah. Like, I'm ready. I'm like, ready. This yeah. is here. I've, I've been, been working for yeah. this. Yep. Um, how much has your your mindset shifted since you first were drafted? You did oh, so much, so much. You learn about what's important. Yeah. You learn about you learn about you. You learn about what what you have to do to be successful. Um, like, if I still took the same approach and mindset into hitting as I did my first year, I don't know if I would get a single hit all year. Mm-hmm. I might go up there and literally go 0 for 300. What was your mindset then? Back then, I think it was just like sit on fastball until I get two strikes. Why? Because guys can't command pitches like that. Yeah. They can't command pitches like that down at the lower levels. Mm-hmm. And coming off of... Uh, so you're like, I'll, I'll do that for a short season. I'll do it no, for a rookie. No, no. It wasn't, it wasn't even... It was see, just, that would be a solid... Yeah. That would be a, a solid mindset. It was mindset like, no matter where I am. it was that thought out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was day to day. Okay. It was day to... It, w- it might have been week to week. It might have been, you know, pitch to pitch. Mm-hmm. Like, because when you're that young, you jump ship on your plan. Yeah. Like... Um, you know, I'm sitting, this guy throws a hundred, like I have to sit fastball to catch up to it. And then he throws a first pitch slider. And then all of a sudden you don't, you don't, you don't even know what you're thinking. <laughs> you're, you're like, uh, you do I like, get rid oh, of it? But, yeah, yeah. You know, and if someone asks, you're like, mm, you know, I was looking fastball and I got a slider. Like, you, no, you just, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And I, guys to this day still do it in AAA. Players still do it in AAA. And the difference between your everyday starter in AAA and your everyday starter in the big leagues is that consistency. Yeah, it's that 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 you got to have that that bank fall up top, that 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 you got to be Fort Knox up top. Mm-hmm. Like you just can't be shaken. Mm-hmm. Like no matter what. Mm-hmm. So you how go, did you, you work go, on that? Uh, honestly, I had I had someone give me a long nasty pep talk last year. Really, dude, I was. So last year, when in Hartford or when in? No, this isn't when I was in uh, Albuquerque. Last year, so 2019. So when I was in AAA. Oh, last year, last year is in this previous. Yeah, okay, this previous mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Um, my roommate Logan Cozart. Mm-hmm. He, uh, I was hitting. I want to say I was like hitting like 230. You know, playing like once every, once every three days. It was it was tough. I was definitely the worst start to a year i had ever had and then we weren't this wasn't even like a start like Mm -hmm. it wasn't even early Mm -hmm. anymore like it was was it was like like july may june yeah 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 for sure it was like july okay and i was still i was following you for a while during that time yeah Yeah. i was still hitting like 230 and uh one night i was trying to wind down after a game i think i was playing like you're playing video games i read there's some article that you kind of i think alluded to this well, that's like yeah. I mean, guys. That's how yeah. people wind down, like, yeah. Because you're playing, like your whole day is built up to six thirty, yeah. To six thirty, like mm-hmm. you, th- my my work day starts at six thirty in the afternoon. So when people are getting off work, like winding down, that's when I'm getting like ramped up, mm-hmm. yeah. And then it, and that carries on until ten, ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night, or later, yeah, or or even later. Yeah. And I'm trying to like, I'll I'll do stuff where like you have to figure out a way to wind down like and it's you know what do you do you know like you're in a city you don't know you don't have a vehicle you don't 
you're limited monetary wise what else is there to do besides you know maybe go get a drink somewhere or play video games you know call your girlfriend i, mean, I don't know I'm, a a, I'm actually up for ideas if you have a better idea <laughs> maybe meditate or something like that yeah 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 something like that but uh it's a spartan life yeah it's different it's mm-hmm. different and and that's not even like it's one thing to sit here and like listen to this podcast and think yeah you know like i could see that like it's you just gotta you gotta live that you mm-hmm. have to live it you know because it's so easy to sit on the other side and be like oh why don't you just you know go close your eyes like dude you're trying you're trying to keep a job you're trying to keep your dream alive that you've had ever since you were four years old you know and if you don't play well you don't just go home and close your eyes and fall asleep mm-hmm. like it's not it's not it's not like that it's not mm-hmm. that easy so so uh, I, was, I was playing video games and I think Logan, Logan was watching me in the background. I was think I was like, you know, complaining or whining or something like that to like one of my friends that I was playing with. And uh, I got, I got done, but it was like my last game I got done playing and I went and turned the TV on and sat in bed and I said, I just mumbled something under my breath or something like that to Logan. It's like, this is like 11 o'clock at night, 1130 at night. He rips off the covers, gets in my face and starts yelling at me about how I'm being... You know, this, that, and the other for words I don't feel like saying on the podcast. <laughs> you know, just undressing me up and down about how I'm being soft, this and that. And I was like, bro, you know what? Like, you're right. You're right. And it would have been so, like, I feel like the natural response is to be like, you know, get angry back. Or like, get in his face and this and that. But he was doing it out of love. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I was at a point in that last season that I was on my hands and knees. I was on my knees every night praying like like lord if this is not for me i want to go home i'm not having fun i'm miserable i'm so upset with myself so i know what he was talking about like yo you you look so bad when you come out to the outfield after your first at bat and you got your head hung because you still got three more at bats Mm -hmm. you get down about the first one and it takes you out of your next three at bats so i knew what he was talking about because i would go home every night and hang my head and just pray and like I was, I felt so, I was feeling sorry for myself. Like I was looking back like that was, that's embarrassing that I was acting like that. Mm -hmm. So like maybe it's moments like that where you, where you grow, you Mm -hmm. know, certain things like that where you're just like, you know what, like, like that's, I needed that. Mm -hmm. I needed someone to get on me, you know, and I didn't need it from a coach. Like I need it from someone that is close with me, Mm -hmm. someone that knows me, my intentions. That sees you in your quiet moments after everything each day yeah that's right and he did that and uh from that day on i think i i prayed and i was like you know what like i i'm tired i'm tired man i'm weak like i'm mentally weak and and overall i would say that i'm a mentally strong person like not a lot bothers me i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty chill i'm pretty calm and stuff like that but like the stuff that i'm passionate about it gets to me mm-hmm. when I when I'm underperforming, like I know that I have the potential to. Uh, that got to me, and it it beat me down because we're playing seven days a week, and and, and it's and you start April eighth. We're in mid July, playing seven days a week, and and you so can, we're you can't create a hundred plus games in. You can't create like a little corner of your brain that's like I'm at peace, you know, because it's always go. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's every day, and like you're trying to wind down, and 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 I think that's what the good ones do is they, there's that separator, like, you know, after you shower, whatever you did that night is left at the field, and when you go home, it's it's home time, mm-hmm. you know, it's time to chill out, be with the boys, be with the wife and kids, but that is so hard to do. It's so hard to separate. Hey, this is my life, and then hey this is my home life like i want to go home and Mm -hmm. relax like i'm not gonna worry about it like i mean i don't it's so hard to explain it's so because it's so linked heavily to your identity because it's related to a dream exactly that's where it gets conflicted it's like in your fibers yeah it's woven into your dna like you either like put up the numbers or you go home yeah what else is there to pursue when was the last guy that signed a contract because he was a great guy yeah right those those guys. Let me tell you something. Those guys don't go to the, those guys don't go to the big leagues. It's because the, the nice guys don't go to the the good teammates that that don't cut it. Yeah. Because what is it about in the big leagues? It's about winning. To win, you got to produce, and that's all that matters. 
you know, and every now and then you obviously don't want to be a bad teammate. That's a completely different story, but but it's very that, easy. That is what matters. You want to get to the top, you got to produce to get to the top. Mm-hmm. And so it's so difficult after like a tough game. And dude, I was w- mentally whipped from April 8th to July, whatever the case may be. It was like going into August, I think is when like you this really happened. kicked it in. It was gear. a series. It was Memphis. This happened in Memphis. And I just started reflecting and I had a really good at bat that night. The night that this little chit chat went on, I had a, uh, I had a really good at bat and I got two attaboys from two superstar big leaguers who were rehabbing in AAA with the Cardinals. Who was down there? Uh, Marcelo Zuna okay. and Matt Carpenter. Yeah, two two superstars. Big time. Yeah, and so I was like, so I thought about it. And I was like, dude, you know what? Like, You're right, bro. You're right. You were so right. And from that, and then I, I laid down that night and I prayed and I said, you know what? I'm tired of trying to control what happens. Like, my destiny in life is is already preset. Like, you know what's going to happen. What's the point of worrying? Like, I'm going to go out every night and give it everything I got. You you know, let the Lord control everything that, that I can't control. And I'm going to give it all I got. And if this is meant to be, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Regardless of how much pressure I put on myself. If it's not... <laughs> and there ain't no point <laughs> in worrying about it, right? Yeah. So, and dude, I'm telling you from that moment on, I've never been more locked in. I've never had a better month. I've never barreled up more baseballs. I've never been that cons- I've always been consistent. I've never been on fire consistent. I'm consistent enough to where, like, I can ride out the lows. And this is coming like from a guy lows. that hit 430 one year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in college, yeah, I had the best batting average in all of Division One. So, yeah, I but felt not, like yeah. that, mm-hmm. except it was, like, power, dude. Mm-hmm. You had 20 bombs. I you, hit 10 in a month. Yeah, and you had that one game where you hit a grand slam and the homer. And that yeah, that was yeah. in the past. So that was, like, right at, I was, like, right at the second half, the start of the second half. Mm-hmm. My second half was decent, but I ended up – I went – I went into the month of August, right? So this is April, May, June, July. This is four months I had nine home runs. And you got about it 28 four, games left or so. It took me four yeah. months to hit nine home runs and pile up a two thirty five batting average. <laughs> At the end of the month of August, I had 19 homers, <laughs> and I was hitting like roughly two seventy five. And think, you had 75 driven in. Which is driven in. extremely difficult to do that many at bats in Six, because your average like isn't fluctuating 50 points yeah. yeah it was something <laughs> stupid and like i mean it was it's literally glory to god because uh he uh, i felt like a, that like a weight before anything was set in motion i felt like a weight had been lifted off me when i said what i had to say to him that night and i was like you know it's like he was just like you know what like now that you recognize that Go do your thing. You just kind of had to give up. You had to give up a little bit. Like the Mm -hmm. air smelt different. Like food tasted different. I was like, you know what? Like I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Because I was playing so tight. tight. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And that that often you see that I feel like with athletes that are wired like you that care so intensely about where they're going. There is such a fine Mm -hmm. line. There is such a fine. There's like a, a Doug Chadwick, our mental skills coordinator gave us this uh or it might have been Andy McKay. I think it might have been Andy McKay. I can't remember. It was one of those two who gave us a sheet of paper and on it it had it had like a graph on it. And it looked like an N. It was built like an N and it was a sliding scale of like somewhere on that slope. On one side, I think it was like on the Y it had like how you play, how you perform and then on the X line, it had when you put, like, the amount of pressure you put on yourself. So, like, some people perform extremely well when they put a lot of pressure on themselves. And then some people perform, like, very poorly when they put a lot of pressure on themselves. I might have them backwards. I think I have them backwards. It's like a bell curve, kind of. There's reaches yeah, a certain exactly, point where it tips. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have to find that happy meet because everyone's different. You have to find that happy medium of how to perform your best with the amount of pressure you apply. And I think it's such, it's a pocket. 
You have to sit right in the pocket. And you have to know. But that takes time. I'm 26 years old. I've been playing baseball since I was four. That It took me 22 years to learn that. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, baseball is a sport, especially being from Florida. You play it every day, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. It's it was, I mean it's it's a ch- it's a chess game, you know your whole career is you're just moving pieces on the chessboard trying to win trying trying to get to the major leagues. How much have you gleaned from kind of people around you? Obviously, you talk about your mental skills coach, but oh, is dude, a lot iron of sharpens iron. Is it is the guys around you? I mean, you're taking you know mental advice. You're just looking at their habits in life, things how they kind of take care of their day. What or is it evolved kind of on your own? It's 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 fifty percent the homies. It's fifty percent you. Mm-hmm. Um, because like when you get to AAA, you hit a point in your career where everybody wants a taste of the top, and AAA has a lot of people that are bouncing back and forth from the big leagues to AAA. And when they tell stories of the big leagues, because they've gotten a taste, they've gotten a taste of what that's like. And they come down and they tell you like these, these stories about, you know, who they played against or I was playing in LA on a Friday night. Like there's 60,000 people or however many people. 60, hold 60. Yeah. yeah, Chavez. Mm -hmm. There's 60,000 people there and there's, you can't even hear yourself think like, I w- dude, that makes you want that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, someone hits a homer in the first inning off, you know, off a stud pitch, off, say, the Mets or in mm-hmm. at court. Say, or something, yeah. yeah, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, you know, say, you know, Madison Bumgarner's mm-hmm. in cores on a Friday night and they just got that place packed. Mm-hmm. And you're in the second inning of 0-0 zero to zero and the guy in front of you walks and you, like, go from, like, 0-2 to 3-2 and you're battling off pitches and then you and then you just get a hold of one. And it's a rush. It's I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I've never had that. I've never had that feeling, but I have done that. Where in front of seventeen thousand people, mm-hmm. and dude, <laughs> it's like there's no way. There's no. There's not. A, there's not a drug in the world that that will make you feel like that. Yeah, it's like there, a there's visceral not a thing in the world that will give you a high like that. And it's it's like. Uh, it's an emotion that I cannot even begin to explain because when you hit first, it is so loud. You cannot even think straight. And he, it's because of something you did. That's the other thing. And then where so it's like snowballing and you're like, this is where it's brought me. Where can it bring me? Yeah, what literally <laughs> everything, every choice I've ever made in life has led me to this moment. This like, batter's box, this yeah. little box. And you're right just here. like, too. And it's built up I my identity. Story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got a story for you. In AAA this year, the last home game of the year, uh, we were in. It, um, I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and it was mariachi night. So it's part of like the his, mm-hmm. like divertido, yeah, noche stuff like that. And it's like the diversity night. So mm-hmm. like teams will take on like basically not like an alter ego, but like we talk about the I Cubs. They had their like. Dominos or whatever is. The, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure what theirs is because mm-hmm. we never played it. But the, like El Paso's is like the Margaritas. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. uh, the Salt Lake Bees are the Abejas, and then which is bees in Spanish. Right. And the Albuquerque Isotopes are the Mariachis, and our uniforms are like black and teal. And they're <laughs> well, sometimes we'll wear black pants with them, and they're they're <laughs> it's gnarly, it's garish. <laughs> but like, there's a giant Latino population in Albuquerque. And Albuquerque's, Albuquerque's, it's cool. The food is amazing, though. And it's because of, you know, the the locals who mm-hmm. have a, a lot of, like, Hispanic heritage in their bloodline and stuff like that. So they blow, I mean, dude, they blow it out on Hispanic night. They blow it out on mariachi <laughs> night. And so it's just music going? <laughs> oh, they'll bring, they'll bring, like, mariachi, like, they'll bring, like, those dancers. They'll have a live mariachi band. In the in the stands on like the concourse, they'll do like like pre, for pregame like they'll they'll drive low riders on the warning track. I did an interview inside of a low rider, first low rider I've ever been in, and they'll drive them around the warning track, and people just go nuts. They go nuts, and 
I started off the bottom of the first inning. I homered. I think it was to put us up two to zero, one to zero. So the place went. Nu- There's seventeen thousand people there. The place I was out playing right field that night, and then I think I made a diving catch, and right like the top of the second inning. So we went out. Shut down top of the first inning. We came in. I was hitting second. Homer to put us up one or two to nothing. I can't remember. And then and then we go back out. I think I made like a diving catch. And then I come up. It was either in the top of the – it was at the bottom of the second or the bottom of the third. And I homered again. And, dude, when I tell you this place erupted, <laughs> I've never – I've never – been so happy to bring joy because they take that stuff that's the Albuquerque that's their is the team. only sports team they have there. Yeah. that's the only professional sports team in all of New Mexico so you got Lobos basketball and then yeah. probably the Topes you know yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah and they have a professional soccer team there mm-hmm. um, and I went out to write and I'm super interactive with the fans I love I love like if they want to heckle I'm all for it like don't get your feelings hurt when I come back with something. You know what I mean? It's just you it's, have a playful time with it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And if they they start yelling at me, like I'll turn around, I'll do something funny, stuff like because I love it, dude. I love that. And um, I went. Out, I think it was like the sixth or the seventh inning. I know it, was, it had just gotten dark. There was one guy who started an MVP chant for me in right field, <laughs> and it felt like six thousand people were chanting MVP. <laughs> And I took my hat off and did like a like a bow, and they went bonkers. And it was the best to this day, best experience I've ever had in uh, playing professional base, playing base, any sports, any sports uh, experience I've ever had. It was. It looked like something from a movie, is what it felt like. The miners is getting kind of like that in some areas, you know. The yeah. the vibes. I mean, Fresno tacos. I mean, they do their own thing out there too. You know, someone died doing that this year, by the way. R.I.P. At a at a Fresno game. They had like. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> they like some dude's heart like gave out on him when he was like mid chow on like the. the they were doing their 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 taco truck night. Yeah, he was trying to like blow it out on like all you can eat taco promotion, and something <laughs> happened big time. Yeah. Man. Someone south, because they're because they do it seriously there too. Fresno, nope. Fresno is mm-hmm. a weird place. Yeah, <laughs> Fresno is a weird it's place. Yeah. It's definitely a, not a place <laughs> I look forward to. It's not one of those hidden gems that you're no. going going for no. out in that area. Well, you're talking about another experience. Kind of mentioned it. You were in Dominican with Donnie. Yeah. Um, did you imagine yourself playing in the Dominican Winter League at one point? I always it, wanted to play winter ball because uh-huh. I know it, you can make a ton of money, and that's not necessarily what it's about. Definitely, that definitely helps. Yes. Um, Validates it a little bit too. Yeah, it makes it, well, they know that, I think they know they have to fork out some cash because they're bringing people from America to a third world country. Well, and you're missing time at home. You're missing time seeing people that you want to see. It's off season, so you just grinded for eight months straight and then they're like, hey, you want to come play a little bit more for two months every day? And it's a totally foreign environment. You're not comfortable. Yeah, you don't speak the native language. Yeah. So, like I said, let me pull up the pros and cons for you. Yeah, man. absolutely. This is the only time I've ever made a pros and cons list for any place I've that, ever been. That was see, that was interesting. When you said that you made a list, I was like, "Oh, this is something he does on the regular, probably." It's not. Yeah, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe I, I should start. You, maybe I'm, I should start doing that. Yeah, for different cities or states or something like that. Just anything. I mean, it seemed like you know, you thoughtful yeah. guy. You would. Yeah. You might want to do that. So, so the Dominican Republic, third world country, first time experience. Took two years of Spanish in high school. <laughs> This is what I got. Pros. The food is extremely good and it's extremely cheap. There's really it's big not plus. very diverse. Yeah. I was eating chicken and rice every day. Mm-hmm. When I tell you this, it the, it was the best chicken and rice. Like it, it like public rotisserie chicken. Think of the best chicken you can have. Doesn't even come close. Flavors popping. The flavor, dude. Like every bite you're like, dude, that's the best. Every bite tastes better than the last bite of Thanksgiving dinner when you got the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the green beans, a little bit of turkey, corn, when all that's mixed into like your very last bite, a little bit of bread. You almost see nothing. You just, this it is tastes it. twice as good as that. Yeah. And it's just a piece of chicken. You don't need all these garnishings and no, you know, no, yeah. it don't, no. Yeah. See, and that's why, they, that's how they know that their stuff is that good because they're, they're not offering a lot. Mm-hmm. It's chicken. 
Okay, maybe put some it's, salt and on it's rice. That might be it. Yeah. 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 And it's that. <laughs> if it's <laughs> two bucks right there and you got, oh, you dude, know. It, you could eat like a whole rotisserie chicken. And I want to say it was, it was like, it was like, f- I want to say it was like 300 pesos, <laughs> which is six bucks. Whole one. It, yeah. But you were given, that's plus, t- that's tip included. Okay. That's and so it was like rice and chicken, and so much to where you couldn't even finish it for f- for four dollars. That's exactly what you're looking for down there, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because it's not foreign. You're like, you know mm-hmm. what? I can eat this. Like, it's not a plantain. It's not a. I don't know yuca. if my stomach's gonna handle this. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's like, okay, like I, I, I'm familiar with this. My, fr- my, my stomach is familiar with this. And you take that first bite, and it's like, dude, <laughs> this is different. This hits different. Um, so anyways, pros and cons list. So the food and, and another thing you could get like, it's almost like a liter, like a liter of Coke you could get at the store. They had like liters of beer, Presidente, like that. Not in a, they were in a glass bottle. They were like, like just over a dollar fifty. <laughs> a You're sim- one of them a bad simple, boys. A simple man, you know, that, that's the place. One of them <laughs> bad boys with a nice little, for five bucks, dude, <laughs> you're chilling. You got food for two days. It's unheard of. Yeah, the money is tax-free. I noticed that there were no ads on my computer. There were At never all. any ads on my computer, never. Wow. Yeah. That's really random. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah, and it's and I'm telling you, it was such an overwhelming experience if you just spent a week down there, a weekend, a week, you wouldn't notice things like this. Mm-hmm. But I was down there for two months. Right. So I, you know, I and I made this list because I knew stuff would I wouldn't remember you would everything. It. Be gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there were no ads, like phone call, no like calls, no, you know, sales calls. <laughs> uh, you could learn. I got to learn another language. Like, so has it really progressed? Yeah, I, I probably have definitely forgotten a little bit since sure. I've been home because I'm not using it as much. But when I when I heard in Albuquerque either, I mean, right, right. And when I go back to the season next year, like I should be able to definitely like be able to converse a lot more now that I know. Well, what it is is you pick up you pick up words, you pick up names of things like like rice is arroz mm-hmm. and chicken pollo, like stuff like that. And you 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 don't necessarily learn like you learn like nouns and verbs and names of things and like you don't necessarily know like the like you know the the words that you put like you know together to form a sentence or to form a sentence but you can stumble your way. You can like hinge a whole idea around a word exactly. or two. Like exactly. you're good. I got it's that word. It's almost like you're like a third grader or not, not a third grader. They speak fluently. It's almost like you're a kid, Yeah. you know, and, 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 and you're stumbling through conversations, but they get the idea, you know, and it's, and it's, you either learn to speak or you don't eat. True. Because the clubbies didn't speak a lick of English. Yeah. So you're asking. So you, they so need you, you to cook. Rely yeah. on, and your phone doesn't work unless you have, so, you know, unless you place pay some outrageous amount for like a cell phone service down there. Which it could only be a good works thing. with Wi-Fi. So you got to be on a spot, and so the Wi-Fi might w- be spotty. And it to- yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> crappy. So <laughs> you either translate what you have through Google Translate, which half the time Wi-Fi doesn't work, so that's it's completely like, out come of on, the like process. I need the, the word, question. yeah. Or you rely. You're at the mercy of another Dominican player who halfway knows English through because they, they play in America. And you're just trying to get a little so plate. You're trying you to make a plate to get that some dinner. shoe meant chicken. And now you're asking for a shoe for lunch. They, they might be trolling you. And exactly, be like, yeah. exactly, exactly. But like, I don't, it's like you just, you learn to like, that trust is so, that is important. You learn another language. And it's like, and you know, the Dominican is like super slang. So mm-hmm. like I've spoken English to people or I've spoken Spanish to people no, back in America. They're like, where did you learn that? So Dominican pocket of Spanish And is I'm slang. like, oh, that's a, it, it would be like going to Louisiana. Yeah. Like talking Cajun. It's like, that's s- like what they Mixed have. with about a yeah. bunch of other things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like perfect Spanish would be like in Spain. Yes. That would be like, like talking the elemental, some, that would be like the talking birth to of from Spanish. Like Colorado, yeah. Like just <laughs> yeah. Like perfect. Yeah, like a mid Midwesterner yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, some of the cons. <laughs> yes, let's hear these. It was the same two meals. It was chicken and rice or Domino's pizza. So, what was the breakfast? 
breakfast it Chicken was like an egg no oh. i mean they have eggs, eggs and, and rice yeah. Like yeah yeah eggs uh maybe some these pork tiny yeah, yeah tiny sausages that they would cut okay some and uh, some juice. Yeah. yeah 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 i forget what i forget what the i forget what it was called and like fruit like cut up coffee fruit. you drink coffee yeah I, that's where i learned to drink uh hot coffee actually just the su- just this past winter black dude i, I l- always have always so liked iced coffee i see but like I mean, iced coffee over there. Like, good luck trying to explain to them what iced coffee like, is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to American. say ice, <laughs> which is yellow. Starbucks did this. And yeah. Then, it's and like. <laughs> cafe, and they're like, you want ice and I'm like, coffee? I don't know what's happening. It's yeah. like, you know, you, I wasn't advanced enough <laughs> to say, like, yo, put the ice in it my coffee. It does simplify your your menu yeah. a little bit. <laughs> so, Domino's, they had Domino's down there. So, Weird. you were either eating chicken and rice, or you were eating Domino's when they offered it. Like, w- if you were in a place that had Domino's, you could be like, hey, I want some pizza. And but most of the time, it's just chicken and rice. Was the Domino's any different? Was it the same pizza pretty it's much? A, it's the same pizza. The marinara sauce down there tastes different. Like like um, the red sauce on the spicier pizza. Spicier? It wasn't spicier. It was like sweeter. It was like mm-hmm. a naturally sweet. Okay. Like a, like it was naturally mm-hmm. sweeter. It wasn't like... Because I don't think there's those GMOs in there. There's no shell. Yeah. There's no shell. You're like, not getting like the... The tomatoes over here are good for, you know, two and a half years. You're not getting over like there. the pimples after eating it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like there's not all that grease on it and stuff yeah. like that. It was just different. Um, I had on my hotel, there were two channels that I got in English. <laughs> Animal Planet and the Discovery Channel. I watched Animal Planet every single day. I saw every single episode of Steve Irwin. I saw every single episode on the Georgia Aquarium. <laughs> And oh, and I would get like SpongeBob on Nickelodeon on Saturday mornings in English. Yeah, in English. Okay, in English. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. That was cool. No, but y- and then it's like you couldn't really go on YouTube much because the Wi-Fi probably was taking forever the ho- to process. The hotel Wi-Fi was decent. Okay. Yeah, so I could Facetime my girlfriend. Okay. I talked to her a lot. Um, and there were a couple of days when I needed that. Yeah. Yeah. You needed just kind of a normal. Yeah, Wave, wavelength here, yeah, like yeah. someone I could like communicate a lot to. Like, yeah, and not talk about baseball. It's like I'm gonna get all these things going on going on in my mind out for a minute. Yeah, you yeah, know? like um, refresh. They only speak the native tongue. I was super far away from home. Uh, the travel every other day it was like uh, you play one game at home, and then you travel. Mm. The closest place was two and a half hours. And the farthest, so it went a two and a half hour travel, a three hour travel, a five hour travel, and a seven hour travel. And this is all by bus? All by bus. Seven yeah. hour bus ride? Yeah. And then you're coming back the same night. So you're not playing a series? After the game. No. One game series. Really? Yeah. And you're not staying in hotels, nothing like that. Just because of cost or... Probably. Probably a little yeah. bit of that, okay. a little bit of everything. I actually heard that the owner of the team I played for, l- that he loses money. Just to host the team. To host mm-hmm. the team and turn the lights on and pay the vendors. Man. Um, But it's so important to that community. Mm-hmm. Which is ca- it's kind of weird because you're thinking like, well, if it's that important to the community, they'd come out and support it. But I, guess, I don't know. I don't know. But he was like a billionaire. Billionaire. That's what he, his passion was. That's another thing I noticed down there is the monet. Yeah, yeah. Like the, uh, ups and down the disparity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was you were either super rich or you were dirt poor. There is no like middle class there. Mm-hmm. It was, uh, it's tough, dude. It's tough. Super eye opening. Because you want to help so bad. Mm-hmm. Like I, I love giving and I want to help out. Like at, when I was coming home, my last day there, I had people asking me for like cleats, bats, gloves, batting gloves, like just the simplest of things, you know, that you ha- that I have so many of. Yeah. And I was giving out left yeah. and right, you know, yeah. but at some point in time, like I have to, I have to use stuff. I need these. <laughs> I need yeah. these batting gloves or yeah. I won't be able to hit. I need yeah. my batter. I can't hit tomorrow. Yeah. I can't perform. Um, uh, it was, it's <laughs> tough, man. It's tough to see stuff like that. I'm sure. And y- it's so immediate. It's like yeah. right there in front of you. But yeah, poverty is at an all-time high, and I have capital everyone asks you for money because they they think like um, – they think Americans are rich. Every American is they rich. They think every yeah. American is rich because you go down there and, and they know how much you make. They know that because you're a foreigner, which was interesting being a foreigner. 
This is the first time in my sure. life I've been a Colorado foreigner. Um, they think they when you go down there, they th- they know you're making a lot more money, but they don't know that your rent is five hundred dollars a month. They don't know that one plate of chicken and rice with that portion size in America is fifteen dollars. Mm-hmm. They don't know that, mm-hmm. you know, and I I can't mm-hmm. tell them. Yeah. My voc I don't I don't have I'm we're yeah. speaking different languages. And like if there's no context to really probably even if you did be like, listen, let's have this lesson on yeah, what like, my yeah, life like is. hey, I'm gonna teach yeah. you. Yeah, like yeah. that doesn't that's not a thing. It doesn't exist. Yeah. And even when you type it into Google Translate, it doesn't translate exactly like you right. want it to. Yeah. Um because their subject they put like their subjects backwards than we yeah. do and stuff. The like order's that. flipped yeah, always flipped. when you translate it. Yeah. Um it, it's not sunshine and roses, but at the same time, you probably, I mean, took some value from just yeah. seeing that though. Huge, huge value. Yeah. You know, like those cons are actually positives for you yeah. now. Yeah. You know, it was, it was an experience and that was just where I was. So don't get it twisted that the capital is beautiful. Mm-hmm. The touristy spots, Punta Cana, Boca Chica, stuff like that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Room service over there costs like fifty bucks American money, so those those are the touristy spots. I liked towards the end. I liked the fact that I was off the beaten path. I liked the fact that I was in a. I was in. I was in the thick of it, dude. Mm-hmm. I was in the Dominican. Mm-hmm. You, I was a local. You were not on a resort. I was in local. Territory. You were not in Cancun. You were in the actual culture yeah. of that place. I was grinding. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. grinding. Well, and it's like you said before, you were meant for the minor leagues in some senses. It's yeah. probably... I wasn't meant for that. I wasn't meant for that. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. You know, you did it. Not yeah. many people get that, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah. What was it like we, being we there with Donnie? Guys. Donnie, man, made it so much easier for me. Yeah. Oh, man, I could imagine. That's crazy, it. though. I mean, being you got two guys, you, you know, UNF, and you're playing I there. saw that he signed to that team, and I FaceTimed him. And I was like, bro, and he was on the plane. And I said, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to the Dominican. I said, do you know that I signed for that same exact team? So you signed, you were, you hadn't left yet. He was on his way. Man. Yep. And so it was just totally coincidental in some totally ways. Totally coincidental because there's the Mexican summer mm-hmm. league, winter league. I think there's a team in Puerto Rico. Venezuela just got banned. They disbanded. Got, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Got put on like the do not travel, do not fly list because yeah. of how, how bad things are over there. And it makes you, you you have a newfound respect for people that make something of themselves from there. Mm-hmm. Or people, just everyday people. They don't mm-hmm. even, just everyday people because you understand how much of a grind that is down there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How is that going to reframe you going into this season? Do you think it'll have any impact, you know, on you? Not during season. That, that's a life impact. Uh, yeah. That's like a... Mm-hmm. You know, you're back in the business. They say things could yeah. always be worse. Like, yeah, you could always mm-hmm. be grinding stuff out down there. It's very meaningful to actually see it pay, pan out in your life, though. Yeah, that's tough. Tough. Yeah. No doubt. But you made it there, and um, I'm sure that's, you know. Yeah, I a, got like a little stomach bug. Two of my oh, friends got, scary. got a parasite down there. Yeah. That's scary. So, and then when I came back into America, I swore up and down I had, you know, something like that. But I went and went to like a. It's probably uh, like, <laughs> yeah, like, a little bit. No, it wasn't in my mind. I'm this saying like it's physical. I'm saying like it's physical, but you think like. Oh, it's definitely in the back gonna, of your mind. I'm gonna Two be, out of it's, the seven this, guys got it. I might we be all done. Eat the same I food. might be like have to leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, one of the guys was hospitalized. Two of them. Donnie mm. was one of them. <laughs> Donnie got hospitalized down there. Um, yeah, that stuff is. I think I want to say I lost like 20 pounds. My mom said I came back like my face, like I, my gaunt, face wasn't the same color. And it's not like you're probably like throwing around weight <laughs> like down there, you know. Doing it wasn't. Anything. It wasn't. You like go to a, it wasn't do some good pull weight. ups. Yeah. It wasn't good weight. <laughs> I had lost. Like it was like, dude, you look like you, lo- yeah. you got beat up, and you're just like ragged. Yeah, yeah you're gaunt now. Yeah. yeah, you look tattered and thin. <laughs> yeah, like like you like you've been sick. You're worn out. Like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look wore out. Mm-hmm. Is what you look like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh, she so lovingly puts it. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of somebody who likes to stay fit, you're going to take BP in a little bit with Wes. Yeah. Um, 
two guys at UNF now and kind of built yourself up with a name here a little bit. Um, what's it like with your relationship with him? Oh, my brother? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's my best friend. Best friend. Like he, if we weren't related, I would still try, I would still do the day to day things. I would still call him as much. I'm a hundred percent sure he would call me as much because he calls me 15 times a day, regardless of where he's at. Um, we, like he is like how people say like brothers by choice um you know or whatever however that saying goes yeah. or whatever family by choice friends by or family by whatever family whatever. by blood brothers by choice yeah, whatever that, yeah whatever that saying is um he i truly know yeah i get that because he there's nobody on earth that i t that i talk to more than him uh he's my best friend uh, and I'm so thankful that he has that like go get like go get after it attitude because he knows what it and he played at UNF so like it's extremely helpful that uh, he'll come up sometimes and throw to me in the cage and stuff like that mm -hmm. so and my girlfriend also is she literally just got certified today to become a personal trainer oh wow so having her as well because now she's mm -hmm. got the she has that also, it's like she cheered. And it's called. the mindset. Everybody around you is like, we're going to improve. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Like, I cannot mm -hmm. stress that enough. Like, I also have friends that, you know, are, are burnouts. Mm -hmm. And I love them just as much. Mm -hmm. But, like, <clears throat> my day-to-day -day people, like, the people, like, when I know when, like, when it comes down to brass tacks, like, these are the people that are going to inspire me. You know, and my other friend, my other friends are thinkers. Like, they inspire me in a different way. You know, but, like, right now, while I'm chasing this dream down, I want to surround myself with people like my girlfriend, with people like my brother, because those are the people that are like, they get after it day to day. Like they wake up, they wake up and they're doing something until the time that they lay down at like, like there Driven is no by purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no chill in either of the two of them. Like they don't know what that means. And I'm a, and they need me because I'm like, I'm a good balance of both of them. Like I have that side where I'm like, you know, mm. where I'm like, yeah, like, let's just take it, let's, let's <laughs> kick it, there, you know? And so, like, those two, and thank God I have both of them in my life because they literally keep me on the straight and narrow, which is important for, you know, the lifestyle I have right now, you know? And when it's all said and done, like, I think they have definitely taught me things and I will have definitely taught them things because, like, I'm, their mi I'm both of their missing pieces. I'm both of their missing pieces in life. And, like, I think it's, like, we literally... And, and and we're all really close. Like we're we're all three about to live together. It gives and you so, more purpose too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I, it's it it it's like a perfect like. <laughs> what's the, not like a it's not like a parasite. How like one like just sucks the life out of the other. I forget the word. It's like the opposite of that. Like we all can like it's like a perfect. We're in like perfect harmony together. Like we work together really well. You know, like we all like to eat the same exact things. We all you don't have to think love, about what you're doing. Yeah, we all we do all it. have the same exact interest. Like we all love mm -hmm. to travel. We all love like that spontaneous side. Like we're all like for the most part, we're all pretty structured. And mm -hmm. then and and well, that's and, the, and the important element. aspects. And we're all very like loose in the other aspects of our life. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like and and it's like we're we all re we all work really well off of each other you have the central identity that yeah. you care a lot about yeah. and then all these other things and both of them go. are like aspiring personal mm -hmm. trainers and like uh, i mean like think about that i'm an athlete like how cool is that my girlfriend and my brother both are personal trainers and i'm like the athlete you know and so like i can i can help build them up because i can be like yeah i'm an athlete and i work out you know with taylor lee and i work out with west weeks like oh you guys you're looking for a fitness company yeah go to them they're personal trainers they can help you out. you know and like the same thing with them like they can they build fans like oh my brother my boyfriend yeah that he's a person or he's a baseball player like go you know like go support him mm -hmm. you know like you know you know message him on instagram see how he's doing like let him know that you know you're thinking about, you know because stuff like that pumps me up and it makes things like the day-to-day -day life, like the day-to-day -day grind, it makes me think like, you know what? There is more to life than baseball. Mm -hmm. And it helps me chill out. It helps you take that one step back that yeah, might not be a huge step back, but it's enough of a step back to get you back. Right, yeah. because I know like, you know, the day in and day out when you're surrounded by other baseball players, you're like, yeah, like this is tough. Like, am I going to make it through this? Like I'm grinding right now. And it's like, oh, you know, Sally Mae from back home, you know, just messaged me and was like, oh, you know, like, hey, you know, I want to let you know, like, me and my family are big-time supporters of you. We've always followed your career. Like, you're amazing, and you've got this. Or, you know, whoever it may be, 
you know like that stuff is that's important you know I, I like stuff like that um it's 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 cool it's cool we all kind of work together it's it's awesome it's awesome it's almost like it was you know the lord kind of put that it's perfectly in place for us and we all fell kind of right into each other's laps and i mean awesome. you guys going you know doing what you did on new year's you know, taking that sunset pic, just the thought yeah. of that having being yeah. that being Taylor, what Taylor, I want to do. Taylor that's fun. Us. Taylor was with us. Okay. I, it might have been part of her. It, that sounds like an idea she would have, honestly. That probably was her idea. Um, yeah, we were all three with each other. Um, that was cool. Yeah. One, Stuff like that. One of the questions that I, uh, before this, I was asking around what I should ask you guys is who has the better arm between you and Wes? Cause you both have cannons. Obviously. Oh, no. <laughs> Wes, has a really good, Wes might have a better arm than me. He, I, I think get like skill wise, he was always better than I was. Like he was always stronger than me. He was always faster than me. He had a better, better arm than me. I just think his lot, his path in life was just different than mine. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah, that's well said. Because I've I've watching him last year. Obviously, yeah, reading your good. stats, like he's yeah, good. like he had the stats. He was killing it two years ago before he broke his hand. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I broke my hand. I know that's the, that's the funny it. thing. Yeah, I mean, Hammett bone and then him with the slide, but yeah. still uh, very coincidental. Yeah, I mean, like he just. I think all that plays into something. That's why I don't understand how people, you know. Every uh, everything happens for a reason. Like obviously, like I'm a big time believer in like the Lord, and I'm a Christian and stuff like that. Like I just think, like there's no way, um, that you know that's the stuff that's important. Like I think like in every choice you've made in life has led you right here, you know. So like I think all that like everything happens for a reason, you know. Like that's why I say like his path. He was meant to do something else. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I think, I think mentally, he, what am I trying to say? Like, I think he will excel better at something different. Like like something like personal fitness. Mm -hmm. You're equipped for another, another area of your life. And I've seen him on the road and like. succeed in something different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Because he was a good baseball player. But he might be a great personal trainer, mm-hmm. and he, you mm-hmm. know, he was a, a a good athlete. But he might be a great businessman, mm-hmm. or you know, what whatever, whatever it, he ends up doing. And and he has that like he's like even in the apartment, it'll be like ten thirty at night. He'll come up with this idea, and it's like Wes, bro, I don't feel like talking about some he's of this like, stuff come right on. now. It's for a second, and he's like, dude, yeah. imagine, yeah. imagine if we did this. And like, I love it. Like, I love that about him. I've always loved that. He's always thinking like. What can I, what can, what can I do to, you know, to build, like he's trying to build an empire. And like, I love that about him because I need something like that inside me. Mm-hmm. And, and he helps me. You need he, visionaries. He shows me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. He's always been that visionary entrepreneur mindset. Well, unfortunately I have to cut this short now. Oh yeah. Sorry, dude. But, uh, don't apologize. Cause I'd like to go for another hour or two if possible. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome talking to you. I knew that we would have a great talk just walking in, um, right. and for making this happen. And I know a lot of people are interested in where you are in life, um, especially at UNF yeah. and it's good for you to be able to come by. Yeah. Dude, thank you for having me. And I'm sorry. I was, I was, uh, <laughs> get out of here. I was here. traveling a lot. I know, I know what your off season is. You've yeah. been gone. You've got to take care of this. And yeah. you know, this off busy. season has been weird because I was in the Dominican. Right. Like it threw off my like time. your whole timeline that yeah. you got used to. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But I'm, yeah, I'm super, dude, I'm super approachable. If anybody listening to this ever sees me on public, come up, say hello. Like I'll talk with, I'll talk with anybody <laughs> and I'll, I'll gab and go out and get a drink or what, it, whatever it may be. Like I'll, I'll, I'll hang out with, you know, if anybody, if you want to just sit and chit chat, like I'm all for that. I love talking. Maybe I'll have to catch a game somewhere out this summer, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see where it yeah, is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and also, uh, I'm holding my girlfriend and my brother to this. She said she was going to come visit me once a month in a different city. He told me he would come <laughs> visit me twice. I hope that they. Uh, I'm holding you guys to that. So it's out in the public now. So that's that's out in the ether. You got to follow through on that, guys. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> thanks again, Drew. It's awesome talking to you. Um, and. Look forward to having this out there for everybody. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Thank you. 
so easily we could go on for another hour but i will have to let you go maybe we can catch up later after this season thanks so much drew and good luck this spring so looking ahead we have a very busy weekend men's basketball tonight hosts ju in round two of the river city rumble before facing off against north alabama saturday women's basketball will take on north alabama saturday as well and then they'll turn around and take on ju monday night softball will host its home opening tournament this weekend unf baseball will host vmi for its season opening three game series men's tennis will host unc wilmington friday and women's tennis goes to florida friday so thanks again for listening to yet another episode swoop